you know, Devendra Fadnavis becomes the second youngest Chief Minister of Maharashtra. The previous was Sharad Pawar Sharad at Pawar. the age of 38. And Sharad Pawar became Chief Minister by breaking the Congress. Uh, Devendra Fadnavis, in a sense, has been nurtured by the Congress. He is, in a sense, someone who's emerged from uh, within the ranks. I mean, he's uh, he was mayor at the age of 26. His father was an old RSS BJP leader, so he comes from a traditional family. And uh, his great success, really, was in the Vidhan, uh, in the Vidhan Parishad. He was a wonderful legislator on most issues, whether it was Adarsh, whether it was irrigation scam, that's where he really got his advantage over the others who belong to, a, you know, are 15, 20 years older yeah. than him. He came across as a dynamic communicator. Yes. And uh, it's interesting, state after the swearing in, I've just been told, he's going to go to Doordarshan Sayadri, DD Sayadri, the state channel, and he's going to address the people there on what his vision for Maharashtra is. So he's taking the Narendra Modi model. What Narendra Modi does at, cent at the center, Devendra Fadnav is young. Which is what the campaign line was That's as well. That's right. The, the next, uh, the next uh, candidate uh, who's now speaking is Eknath Kharse, the man who would love to have been chief minister and will probably now have to be reconciled with the number two spot. He again is 20 years older than uh, uh, than uh, Fadnavis, was actually the leader of the party in the legislature, uh, uh, the opposition leader. So he would have naturally expected that he would become the chief minister. He's Maratha, he's from North Maharashtra, which has never had a chief minister. So actually should have had everything going for him. But ironically, when it's come to the crunch, Devendra Fadnavis has been chosen primarily, I think, and Aditi would agree with me that Narendra Modi and Amit Shah uh, chose him over uh, uh, over the others, left to themselves. If there was a vote within the state MLAs, I think a Khadse would have probably won out. Yeah. So, you know, Fadnavis has been imposed in a sense by the high command, much like Indira used to impose leaders when the Congress was in power. Aditi? But I would just uh, like to add, uh, firstly, we have said similar names that I, sh I should explain what Fadnavis means. Uh, Fadnis or Fadnavis is, Fad in uh, Marathi is accounts. Uh, as you know, uh, Maratha leaders like Shivaji and others had largely a uh, Brahmin bureaucracy and uh, people who dealt with the accounts, who kept the, the state mm. account keepers were the keepers of the FUD, uh, FUDNAVIS or FUDNIS. Right. Uh, I must uh, make they a mean disclaimer, the same thing, but? they mean the same right, thing sure. and I must make a disclaimer that I am not related in any <laughs> way to Mr. FUDNAVIS. Um, uh, but thankfully now it's becoming easier for this word for this name to be acceptable because earlier it always used to be uh, described as Fernandez. Are you Fernandez speaking or are you something else speaking? And, 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 and also the first time since Nana Fadnavis, it's almost the, you know, many yeah. believe that a Brahmin in today's Maharashtra could not become yeah, chief yeah, minister. Yeah. Yeah. Just three and a half percent, you had a Brahmin now earlier, Manohar <laughs> Joshi imposed in a sense mm. uh, by Bal Thakre. Now Devendra Fadnavis again and again because of the high command's role. Yeah. I mean, I don't think if he had the, if he didn't have the support of Narendra Modi, there is no way that Devendra Fadnavis would have been able to edge out the likes of Eknath Khadse, who I still believe would feel a little resentful but when is, they've been passed is, over. Is that going to be a problem, Rajdeep? Uh, you think, I mean, going forward right now, when you say that, uh, you know, Devendra Fadnavis in many ways was imposed by the high command, could yes. there be trouble? You know, if you look at the next leader, who's yeah. just been sworn in, Sudhir Mungantiwar, yes. again, someone who's been the state BJP president. And again, who wanted, uh, uh, Nitin, who, who Gadkari. wanted Nitin Gadkari, even though... Nitin Gadkari and said, Devendra Fadnavis are from Vidarbha. Yes. He wanted, we can see this is the 60 plus generation of the BJP right. that you are seeing. Devendra Fadnavis is 44. Yes. So he's actually an entire, you know, it's almost as if the BJP has suddenly bypassed an entire generation of hmm. Maharashtra leaders to choose a Devendra Fadnavis. You know, you had Gopinath Munde, Nitin Gadkari, uh, Sudhir Mungantiwar, all of these the leaders, plus. all of them came to really uh, in the 80s. You know, they emerged as the BJP became more powerful in Maharashtra in right. the 1980s. Now they've been bypassed. Most of them sort of went to jail in the yes, emergency. Yes. So now they will feel, who's this young man? So I think it'll take some time for Devendra Fadnavis to get used to the idea that he is the uh, chief minister and these people are all under his but, but you're saying that Devendra Fadnavis won't be viewed as an upstart because he's no, made no. his bones. He's Absolutely. made his bones in prison. I don't think he'll be viewed as an upstart, but mm. I think he will be certainly seen as someone who is junior. Yeah. You know, they were, I, I think that's been the problem that the Mungandivars and the Kharses have had. Why is someone so junior? Mm. Why are we being bypassed? And one of the re advantages, he's, he's a better communicator. Yes. And I think Modi has realized that today's India needs a good communicator also as Chief Minister. But I think the question that Shiv uh, May was kind of uh, sort of hovering over is, 
will the resentment uh, such as it is against Devendra Fadnavis reach the point where some senior leaders may do a Narayan Rane hmm. on uh, could there with, be friction? with somebody could else? There be, uh, yeah. could, could they, could they, could they join up with some, yeah. somebody else? Yes. Firstly, I, I don't think the arithmetic uh, adds up. Yes. You can't even if you want to. Yes. And I don't think at this point uh, anybody in the BJP, uh, no matter how Mahatwa Kangchi, how ambitious or how uh, clever, uh, would want to rock the boat mm. at this point. Particularly as long as they know Modi's support is there with Mr. Fadnavis. Mm. But remember, it is as of today a minority government. Yes. As of today, the Shiv Sena hasn't joined. So in that situation, Devendra Fadnavis, because Devendra Fadnavis' other strength was he was the one who took the NCP and others on front Frankly, on, on, on yeah. the issue of corruption. Yes. So you see, he today can't be seen to back off. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and therefore, at some stage, when he's asked questions, will he take that tough stand? How will he manage that? I think a lot of the... This will have to be managed. The person who's now being sworn is an interesting uh, uh, ship because yes. he brings back for me memories as a young journalist. One of the first press conferences I attended was one of the ABVP. He was the ABVP president of Mumbai, Vinod Taude. Taude yes. And he's the sort of urban face in a sense now of the BJP. Right. Uh, someone who's uh, gone again through the ranks. A yes. lot of the good thing about all the people who are being sworn in, they've all come through the organization. There's no one who's come laterally. Right. They've right. all over the last 20, 30 years worked very hard. One is first election this time mm. was the leader of the party in the upper house again a very powerful speaker so yes. the bjp has been able to their credit and i think credit goes to pramod mahajan and gopinath munde who nurtured a uh, young leaders like vinod taude yes and today i think uh, you know he owes a lot to uh, pramod mahajan and uh, gopinath munde for being where he is uh, it's a, going to be a small cabinet from what we are told but most of them are organizational men uh, you know who have really uh, cut their teeth in uh, in the ABVP in student politics before they become ministers. You know, it's a historic it's a historic day, Rajdeep, first BJP chief minister uh, in the state. And you know, all of these people we're seeing sworn in at this point of time, taking the oath uh, at this point of time. Uh, you know, the 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 notion that uh, Devendra Fadnavis was imposed. How is the BJP leadership? Has it? Uh, well, my, I, I'd like to divide my question into two. Actually, did the BJP leadership have to manage? emotions among these leaders because you know they're not small fry they've all like you said risen through the ranks they're people who you know uh, oh, command a degree of respect did that have to be managed internally absolutely 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 i think as, as i said i think it wasn't easy <laughs> it required a lot of con uh, uh, you know uh, 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 they had to be they had to be convinced mm. you know lo look at what happened with gadkari you yes. know it's unusual there were bjp leaders openly saying yeah, yeah. nitin gadkari should be made chief minister even as mr gadkari was was trying to stay out of it the fact is that deep down inside today i think he will also feel that he's been passed over you know for years the battle yeah. in maharashtra after pramod mahajan's death in particular was munde versus gadkari yes now munde passes away i think somewhere gadkari would have felt that he would be the natural choice now as chief minister and along comes Fadnavis. Yes. I mean, as I keep saying, a generation has been bypassed by the BJP. And, you know, full credit to Narendra Modi that he's, he's realized that the younger leadership is perhaps more attractive to a younger Maharashtra. And a clean face. You see, I think the big advantage Fadnavis had over a Gadkari, he was seen as relative, he was seen as clean. Yes. Gadkari somewhere was seen as close to power, businessman, left the BJP presidentship under a shadow. I think that made a difference. All right, that made a difference. Uh, Dr. Manisha Priyam is still with us uh, live. Uh, I think we still have her. Dr. Priyam, if you can hear me, I uh, wanted to bring you in on this and get your... Okay, Dr. Priyam is not with us. Uh, Aditi Fadnis and Rajdeep are still with us. Those pictures will remain live on our screens. Uh, various leaders taking the oath uh, as they go forward. Uh, Rajdeep, just before you joined us, uh, Aditi Fadnis, me and Dr. Manisha Priyam were talking about the Shiv Sena as well. You know, we had these pictures of uh, Udhav Thakre leaving Matushri, arriving there uh, at the Wankhede Stadium. It's a campaign, the, the tone of the Shiv Sena, which has moved from uh, sort of a reasonable tone to open acrimony to very ugly things being said finally to some pretty reasonable supportive positive things being said what happened in the last 24 hours Rajdeep that Udhav has finally after asking his men to boycott the entire show to finally personally making an appearance you know I, I think at the end of the day Udhav Thakre is caught between a rock and a hard place yeah. and he's still not sure what he needs to do you join the BJP government your in you know uh, your entire campaign of being distinctive goes 
you stay out you lose power yeah. you know it's like that old ajit joke yeah. liquid ise mar ise jeene ise marne nahi dega oxygen ise oxygen ise marne nahi dega liquid ise jeene nahi dega right. so i think the shifts in as in a bind and that's why uddhav thakre has decided let's play it let's see how it goes over mm. the next few weeks yeah. if we are able to work out an arrangement great we are not going to get the portfolios we want we won't get the deputy chief ministership but the irony is there is a minister of the shiv sena in the central in the center, government yes i mean look at the absurdity of what is being played out mr yeah. anand gite is heavy industries minister yeah. here but they are boycotting or were planning to boycott the function till this morning yes. so i think somewhere good sense has prevailed because i think the bjp at the shiv sena at the moment needs to be in power remember they are in power in the bmc they will at some stage need the bjp they need they know that narendra modi is not going anywhere yeah and i think modi is the kind of person who wants an apology i feel from uddhav thakre for the comments he has made my sense is that i could be wrong but my sense is that modi wants some kind of a public acceptance by uddhav thakre that you are the supreme leader would would that ever be forthcoming in any form whatsoever i mean it could be it might not be i think you know after a point it becomes it hardly matters hmm. uh, the fact is that I think here we are seeing a, a, another a subterranean game going on, which is the competition between the NCP and the Shiv Sena. I mean, NCP now is part of the well; it's given unconditional support despite uh, the BJP's uh, bitter condemnation yes. of uh, Ajit Pawar and the irrigation scam and his comments about drought and so on and so forth. Yes. Uh, and they were the bitterest enemies and now the ncp is giving it unconditional support is this a way uh, by which the ncp is dipping its toe into the nda waters and what is the ncp's position going to be in the rajya sabha where the central government does not have a majority i think that's an interesting yeah. point particularly the rajya I mean, sabha point is it's interesting it's going to be very very interesting because ncp has as many as six members mm. of the rajya sabha right. they need the ncp support in things like the insurance bill gst etc uh, etc et they need every every vote they can get the because sabha, the yes. complexion of the rajya sabha despite all the victories in the states is not going to change till 2016 yeah yeah so uh, i mean you are now right now going to have an election in up uh, which is again going the bsp sp way because that's yeah. the the which the is why the bjp the has been so uh, you know ambivalent and not really said anything absolute about any of these two parties so you know the question it, is it's a tough thing you know yeah. for the nc for the bjp also how do you deal with the yeah. ncp at mm. one level you ran a campaign where you called National it a corrupt party. naturally yeah. corrupt party yeah. Yeah. now suddenly you seem to be more ambivalent yes. towards them you realize you might need their support at some stage at the center it suits sarath pawar also yes. because sarath pawar wants to retain some relevance even after being the fourth player yeah. in 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 maharashtra yeah. so how does he retain relevance you know keeps the pressure on on the shiv sena if you have a problem mm. with the bjp we are always ready try and reach out to modi at the center we know that there are businessmen yeah. who are close to both sharad pawar and narendra modi so i think sharad pawar is keeping his options open at the moment i think he's worried that the, he doesn't know which way the congress will go in the next couple of yeah. years i think yeah. that's his fear and i think you know the the interesting of course face is the one that you're now seeing on yeah. your screen because i think in many ways shiv uh pankaja munde becoming a minister yes you know she was an mp till the other day father passes away uh, you know uh, uh, father passes away now she takes over the father's mantle in a sense so she is now the face of her father uh, uh, of uh, uh, of the munde legacy yes you know yes. she was the mla till the other day in b that's right and yes. now she uh, and her sister is becoming an mp so i think she becomes the face and many believed that she actually was the most magnetic face of this campaign right, when she right. went out i went saw one of her campaigns in marathwada she attracted a large number of people maybe it's the sympathy for mm. her father but mm. also she was able to effectively project herself yeah. as some kind of a ruler and her aspirations were were, were pretty explicit she was open in an interview yeah. to headlines today yeah. she, she said, said she wants to be yeah. chief minister right. exactly. and i i saw a section in fact of the bjp was actually saying that if you don't make you know if 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 you don't want any of us make her yeah. but don't make fadnavis i think they fear with fadnavis that they are out of power for a longer period yeah. so they yeah. were almost seeing pankaja munde as an alternative to devendra fadnavis but i think she's you know this is really her first term yeah. as yeah. an mla so, so she expects she still to be, has some time to go she still has some time to go but it's an you know it's interesting she's the only woman i think yeah. that who's going to be sworn in today hmm. uh, she comes from marathwada she is an obc 
and i think somewhere down the line maybe 5 10 years from now hmm. she could well become a, a potential chief ministerial candidate if she is able to show that she has more than just what she showed in this election right. and ability to connect with masses uh, you know uh, uh, aditi we were talking about we were talking about the the, the shiv sena at this point of time and uh, you know the, the bjp has decided to form a minority government uh, and rajdeep i want to bring you in on this as well uh, aditi and i were talking about the shiv sena's position now as far as uh, as far as this government is concerned they've decided uh, they've decided not to join the government uh, there's the bmc where the shiv sena needs the bjp strength there are various other factors like you said that there's the center they've got a minister there at the center what kind of situation uh, you know specific to maharashtra we talking about as far as the shiv sena is concerned does it have any strength does it have any bargaining power at all with the with the bjp Look I think you know if you see the Shiv Sena's uh, the demographics of the <laughs> Shiv Sena MP uh, MPs or geographical uh, uh, composition mm. most of them are Mumbai Thane Konkan right. more than half of them so that region is an area particularly the Konkan and Thane where the where the BJP has not made the kind of inroads they want the BJP on the other hand has shown that it's been able to make inroads in other parts of Maharashtra So I think the alliance still works. Yeah. You know, it's not as if, I mean if they were together they would have got more than 200 seats. <laughs> they would have wiped out the Congress NCP in this election. Right. I think the Shiv Sena will have to take a call does it want to be the is it willing to accept the junior partnership. Right. I think it's now a question that they have to come to terms with the fact that the BJP has put a Lakshman Rekha saying you're the junior partner you won't get deputy chief minister hmm. you're not going to get all the uh the the sort of malaidar or the wet yeah, ministries yeah, that yeah. many want in 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 maharashtra right. in mumbai every election so if they come if they reconcile themselves to that then this arrangement can work if they don't then there's a question mark and not just the shiv sena mm. all bjp allies are going to face that predicament so you saw the haryana janit uh, yes. uh, 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 janit congress had to leave i'd like to see what happens to the akalis two in years punjab, from now yes, how yes. is that relationship now going to play out who's yeah. the It's, junior who's yeah. the senior partner in punjab yes How is the relationship with Paswan going to play out come Bihar election next year? Will Paswan completely accept uh, a, a very very limited profile yes. for himself? So I think these are questions. But I think the BJP has drawn a Lakshman Rekha with the Shiv Sena, and the Shiv Sena is still coming to terms with the fact that they are the junior partner, which is why yeah. I think they didn't attend even today's. I mean, they didn't. Actually, get them two ministers were being offered to them. They felt two were too few. Right, two two were too few. Dr. Manisha Priyam, the Lakshman Rekha has been drawn. Do you think that the Shiv Sena can reconcile to this position, to this existence, as Rajdeep says? At this point of time, see, you have to see politics and time horizon. Yes. In this short time horizon, the Shiv Sena has no option except to accept the position of being the second one there. now this is also in in a sense a very important point made by rajdeep there a signaling to the other alliance partners coming up in jharkhand or in bihar that if the bjp is going to have the largest numbers it is going to be the strongest party yes. so no more the old style politics where the small is going to play the veto politics where the small can be the party spoiler for the big one right if you want come behind us otherwise we'll rule as a minority and i think that's a strong message and signal that's going out you know that we could rule as a minority and that signal is going to really change the course of the next few elections hmm. even in bihar there's hardly any doubt that the bjp would have very large numbers but if it doesn't have a majority this will be the shape of things to come it will rule with a minority position and let the other parties come and fall in its feet saying okay now accommodate us even somewhere but openly of course the party that is trying to eternally bargain yes. will try and portray itself as 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 having the straw man somewhat so the political tempering may be in a strong language but at this point of time it is basically internal bargaining that the shiv sena has to be content with in the long term in the long horizon it could be anything for the shiv sena but at this point of time it is essentially bargaining all right bickering and bargaining is is the kind of profile that the shiv sena at least for the moment will have to reconcile itself with uh, over a time horizon as dr priyam says we'll have to see if the shiv sena can reconcile itself as rajdeep said to a a, a junior role a, the you know the position of a junior partner but rajdeep you know uh, picking off on a point uh, that dr priyam just made the signal that's being sent out to the bjp's partners for instance if i could ask you a specific question what would be going on in prakash singh badal's mind right now no i think there's there's genuine concern because there's a section within the bjp which believes that the one state in north india which they didn't do well in the 2014 election was not because of narendra modi or or the bjp the problem was the akalis yeah 
You know, it was the Akalis who were seen to be tainted with corruption, with anti-incumbency, and the Ahmadmi Party benefited from that in the in Punjab. So, what if we were to, in a sense, redraw the balance of power between Akalis and uh, and, and, and the BJP and, and the BJP and very similar to Shiv Sena yeah. because while Bal Thakre was in charge, Shiv Sena was the senior regional mm, partner. Mm. Partner while Prakash Singh Badal is there, the Akalis will probably always see themselves as a senior partner. What happens to a post Badal Akalis? So I think I think we have to look at this because that's exactly how the this vote yeah. of the BJP in Maharashtra. A lot of it has been taken away from the Shiv Sena. Right. You know that traditional the Shiv Sena in the Hindutva alliance and I remember Pramod Bajan telling me this as early as 1991 one day in the post Bal Thakre era we will be the number one uh, Hindutva party mm. of Maharashtra he said this in 91 it's taken 23 years yeah. for it to happen but it happened but it happened yeah and yeah. whether it will happen in Punjab in two years time we don't know because the Akalis are also a solid grassroots party at yes. one level but maybe five ten years down the line and maybe with the way Amit Shah and Narendra Modi are going about their politics they will try and even bring it forward hmm. you know you uh, just to take this point forward you saw some reverberation of this in the Haryana election right uh, people in the BJP complained bitterly that the uh, Akalis were although they were part of the NDA Akalis were were muscling their way in and particularly with the help of the younger cadres of the Akali Dal youth wing were uh, changing the situation in Haryana especially where Punjabis and Sikhs were uh, present in large numbers yes the BJP complained that we should we would have got at least at least uh, three other seats had the Akalis not uh, spoiled the game for us and played spoiler basically by uh, campaigning against the BJP well not overtly against the BJP but not campaigning for the BJP and campaigning for their own candidates in several areas, uh, the, the Akali Dal actually put up candidates in direct competition to the BJP, yes. which split the BJP vote. So, uh, all these things are there in the on the horizon, and uh, whatever the body language, uh, you know, pleasant as it may mm. be mm. today, uh, I think uh, every alliance partner of the NDA is watching the BJP's moves with a hawk sign. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't know where the dagger will, will land. But this is the strongest possible signal. The way the, what the yeah. BJP has done in Maharashtra. Absolutely. The strongest possible signal. Absolutely. I mean, you know, look at it. This is the oldest alliance. Yeah. You know, this is the oldest alliance along with the Akalis. These have been the two alliances which have stood the test of time. Now, if these alliances find themselves hostage to local politics, to local ambitions, yeah. to saying that, you know, in the, we are not just a national party, but we are the number one party of your state as well. Then I think it changes the rules of the game. It's it's much like why were very, very few parties for mm. a long time reluctant to ally with the Congress. Because they always felt the Congress will sooner or later gobble us. Yeah, yeah. And after what has happened in Maharashtra, I think the same feeling will be there for, for, for potential allies of the BJP in the future. Mm. They will feel that the BJP is out there to extract the maximum out yeah, of us. Yeah. I think the Shiv Sena today has reason and it's some feeling to feel hurt. Yeah. You know, because I think there's been a lack of communication, yes, bitter campaign, but I think it could have been resolved in a better manner. The way it's played out in public, yeah. and I'm not holding, a, you know, I, I believe Uddhav Thakre also has to take responsibility for some of the language that he used, both again Narendra Modi and the BJP. Right. But if you've been allies for 25 years, surely you could it have could resolved have been this. Done with, uh, Particularly with because the BJP yeah. didn't get a majority. I mean, even after not getting a majority, yeah. even a minority government, the BJP has the confidence of telling the Shiv Sena, if you want, you can stay at home. Stay at home. What we need to worry about, I think, is the also the ideological issues which are going to face the, the smaller parties in mm. the NDA. Mm. I remember that when the whole debate was going on about uh, multi-brand retail and opening up multi-brand retail and allowing retail to come into India, yes. the, at one point, the Akali Dal actually backed the Congress although they were bitterly opposed to the Congress in every other field. They backed the Congress in, uh, or they made noises like that, in uh, supporting uh, the opening up of the retail sector. And there, they were badly chided by the BJP. Yes. I know this because sources in the BJP themselves told me that the Akali Dal was on the cusp of, uh, of kind of switching mm. to a, a, a supporting role for uh, retail, FDI and retail. Right. And they were told by the BJP that, look, why are you being so stupid? Don't do this. It will put a strain on the alliance. Can I, can I just yeah, give, yeah. Give, just away from the BJP, yeah. just a historical perspective to what's happening. This is the first the man, time. The man on the screen. Yeah. yeah, the, yeah. My, my, apart from Mr. Modi, of course, there. And there you can see Prakash Singh Badal. All the chief ministers have come oh, they're all of there, the NDA, yeah. Manohar, Parikar, Chandrababu Naidu. But just a thought. First time swearing in being held at the Vankhede Stadium. Yeah. 
Stadium named after Sheshra Vankhede, who was interestingly a Congress mayor of, of Nagpur. And today you have a mayor of Nagpur who has become the chief minister. Chief minister. Ah. So, you know, in, in, in a strange way, sometimes history sort of brings you. And, and I know some cricketers are troubled because today the two gates named after Polly Umbrigar and Vinod, uh, Vinu, Vinu Mankar. Yeah. For one day have been changed into Hashu Advani and Shivaji Rao Mutkar. So, the, the, right. the, sta the cricket stadium has been taken over. You can see Narendra Modi there larger than life. And I think the national anthem possibly is being pay, played, played at the Played once again, yes. So, all the important portfolios are now gone and yeah. what is the Shiv Sena now left with? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming, although portfolios have not been announced yet, Absolutely. I'm assuming that uh, all the important portfolios are, will be given out now. So, I mean, even Shif, if Shiv Sena… Shiv Sena will want some Bombay, Mumbai centric uh, portfolio which might help mm. them with the BMC. But yes, you're right. I think the Shiv Sena will it's now find it very difficult because I think the BJP has sent out a signal that the major portfolios are ours. You're very much a minor partner in this relationship. If and you're a partner at all. I didn't see… Did you see? I don't know whether uh, Mr. Modi met uh, Uddhav Thakri. He possibly did. But uh, <laughs> and I presume he would meet everyone there. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I, I think Mr. Modi has been personally hurt by some of the statements made, particularly by, by that by Udhav. By Udhav, particularly that editorial, which eventually they had to sort mm. of retract mm. from, mm. where they said, you know, if a Chaiwala's son can become a prime minister, why can't I become chief minister? Chief I think minister. that was hurtful. Right. And I think it was unnecessary. It was undesirable. And I think that somewhere is hurt. It's good to see Advani ji there. So the old order of the BJP is also there today. And I think it's a big day for the BJP. The first chief minister, BJP chief minister of Maharashtra state, which has been completely dominated uh, by the Congress for, for for most of the last six decades. You know, uh, you know Rajdeep, a, a question that we sort of talked about extensively on counting day, even on polling day, and you know, right through the campaign, was the notion of the of the Modi wave. As the you know, as the the history of this day sort of sinks in and people, uh, you know, sort of function under this government, who takes the credit for this victory? Is it is it still going to be the the, the Modi Shah combined? What was it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, look, look at the, the the statistics. You know, clearly show it. Here is a party whose highest vote. Uh, Highest seat share was 65. You go to 123. Yeah. You get an incremental vote across most regions. Clearly, the Modi factor played a role. There's absolutely mm. no doubt in my mind because the BJP is not as if it was organizationally robust in Maharashtra. Particularly after Gopinath Munde's passing away, Pramod Mahajan passing away, the BJP was not seen to have the same energy that even it had in the 1990s. Right. But I think the Narendra Modi factor has brought that energy Energized back. Energized it. It right. has, you know, it, it, so I think he deserves a large share of the credit. I think a large okay. share of the credit for this victory in my, and I think the, somewhere the Shiv Sena perhaps underestimated that. Right. The Shiv right. Sena thought that at the moment Modi, yes, at the national level, but in the state level, people will come and vote for the Marathi Manus party. And I think that's where they got it slightly wrong. All right, they got it slightly wrong. These live pictures coming in uh, from the Wankhede Stadium, all the dignitaries on their feet, the ceremon ceremonials, uh, this, the oath taking, the swearing in ceremony itself uh, is complete. Uh, as Rajdeep said a short while ago, Devendra Fadnavis, the Chief Minister of Maharashtra, will be addressing the state uh, on live television in a short while from now on the state uh, Doordarshan. We'll, of course, bring uh, parts of that to you live here on headlines today as well. The Prime Minister and other top leaders are all there congratulating the new Chief Minister, the first BJP Chief Minister of Maharashtra.